or Star Wars Outlaw is the new action adventure open world RPG from Ubisoft starring a underground scoundrel named Kavos takes place during the original trilogy I think between episode four and five or something like that I don't know um, just another Star Wars storyline to muddy up the timeline of Star Wars so let's first watch this trailer because I have not seen it Let's see if there's anything to be excited about. Official story trailer, let's get it. Each of you represents some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy. Is fit clean. Pikes, Crimson Dawn, Huts. It's a golden age for the underworld. The Empire controls every corner of the galaxy, but they're distracted by a rebellion that won't quit. It's an opportunity to make millions. I'm trying to get to the money. The underworld's favorite new scoundrel. Ah. We meet at last. What do you Would that be an actual special move in the game? Can I bang a nigga head up against the table and shit? Zarek Fetch. <laughs> their new box head, box head activate. You cross their balls. His fit is clean. People now, who resub make me happy. You sort of like when Rouge the Bat throws it back. Shout out to Coolio with the sub. Hmm, are they hinting at this is going to be a stealth action game? Assassin's Creed in space? Is this what that is? Because that, I feel like this camera angle is very, very intentional. That, job, that one too. It's a death wish. Oh, shit. Is that supposed to be Han Solo or is that just another person they froze? Because I know they were freezing other people. It doesn't look like Han. But, uh, yo, shout out to Finesse with the sub. Appreciate, appreciate it. I'm in. How Pretty. You live and die by your reputation. Yeah, Carbonite confirmed. Know the place. Shout out to Kimbabe with the sub. Your What's your problem? Come back when you're not. Daba, right? Look, don't try anything. I got a whole crew surrounding the. Okay, we're skipping that part. For about as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Nyx. Yeah, what'd she say? For as long as me and I can remember, it's been me and Nigs? What, what's that mean? <laughs> what's his name? For about as long as I can remember. Just been me and Nix. Nix? I think it's Nix. N I X. But that shit, she sounded like she said Nigs. What did you say? It's just been me and you niggas. <laughs> Doing what we have to to survive. Yeah, this looks like a. That, that, once again, like this, this sequence right here, this looks like a stealth action game, possibly. Not full blown stealth, but you know, like Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed type beat. We have to to survive. This job is my one shot at freedom. But if we're gonna pull this off, we need the. Is that an in-game animation? That looked a little rough when she jumped. But if we're gonna pull this off, we need the right crew and the right. Why does a robot need a coat? Robots get cold. Like. <laughs> Because you were one of the best hunters in the Outer Rim. She's more connected than you let on, Slero. Best is mixed up in something bigger. The Outer Rim is a dangerous drip. Oh, excuse me. Everyone is fighting for their piece of the. <laughs> but all I want is to live free. So I'm gonna risk it all. Down in the booty hole. Star Wars Outlaws pre-order available now. When in the timeline does it take place? I, I believe between episode four and five. It's like in the original trilogy. Um, does she have a spaceship? I think so. It, it looks pretty good. I think the story looks good. Like some of the animations looked a little rough like when she jumped. But for the most part, I think it looks pretty interesting. Story wise, I still got to see gameplay to sell me. August 30th. When does Wukong come out? 
Man, October, November is wide open. Move your game, bro. <sighs> Wukong release date. Ubisoft, 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 Ubisoft. 10 days. 10 days after Wukong. And if this game is a Souls-like game, we're still going to be on this shit, bro. November is AC Red. Is is Japan supposed to come out this year? I thought that was 2025. They're going to so they're going to So that would be stupid as fuck of Ubisoft. This <laughs> Yo, it's like, yo, this game looks pretty good, but who is making these decisions, man? Both of these games, I thought they, okay, if I was them, if I could be on, if I could be in their boardroom, I would tell them, look, people are really excited about Wukong. I would move this game, move this to October, November, and then move Japan to like the top of 2025 or like mid 2025. There's no reason for them to put out two AAA games within like two months of each other. That doesn't make any sense to me. You're going to cannibalize yourself. If you zoom in on the case on the bottom, it says internet required only. Da, 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 da. I, I saw an article about that. Though. Hmm. They already have another Assassin's Creed game for 2025. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be playing this day one then. Because we're probably... well. Day one, we could play it, but like, you know, play it so I can put together a first impressions video. But like, I'm probably going to still be on Wukong. I'm going to go back and then probably go back to this. But God damn, more fucking open world games. Jeez, man. And it sucks because this game, this game looks good. Get three days early access. How much that shit cost? $200? Learn, learn more. Star Wars Outlaws Gold Edition for 110 bucks. You can get three days early access. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. Maybe for a tax write off, I'll get the three day version. I don't know. Remember, most of these guys don't touch grass, so they'll play both. Possibly. Uh, so like, since you brought it up, yeah. Let me see. I believe was it this right here? No. Yeah. So this is just to be aware. The story does look good. We gotta see more gameplay. But if you are excited about this game, just know Ubisoft is anti-poor people. Um, poor people will not be allowed to play Star Wars. Um, someone leaked the AC Red menu. Yeah, I saw it. I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to get a copyright strike. Also, it's just a menu. Ubisoft does not like poor people. Um, you're not allowed to play Star Wars Outlaws. Star Wars Outlaws is a single-player game for Ubisoft, but it's going to require internet connection, at least if you want to install the game. The requirement was spotted on the game's cover on various storefronts. There it is right there. PS5, internet required to install the game. While the game will require internet connection to install it, it will be fully playable offline according to Ubisoft reps who spoke to IGN. Internet will be needed to install as, a, as well as receive post-launch uh, updates. Uh, so basically you gotta verify the game because <laughs> install. They just wanna verify your purchase. Shout out to Reefy Games with the sub. Appreciate it. Someone just subbed. Thanks. Appreciate it. I guess trapping ain't the only way to fast money. Let's be serious. If you have seventy dollars to spend on a game, pay your fucking internet bill. See, you're using, you're using logic. I think you're misunderstanding the point that some people ride the bus with five hundred dollar watches and two hundred dollar sneakers. So it's very possible somebody could not have internet and have like a PS Five or. Like, I would imagine PS, the internet's more important than a PlayStation 5, but some people probably have a PS5 and no internet. Like, you need the internet to do work and shit these days. Um, the good thing is you only need it to install. So, I mean, push comes to shove, you could just go to a friend's house if you really wanted to play it. Yeah, is this, is this really that big of a deal? For Brokies? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ubisoft don't like Brokies. So just be aware, you will need internet to install it. Yeah, priorities. Yeah, is this coming to PS4? That crowd? Don't assume they got internet. They might be on their phone. Um, the internet might be their phone. They got a MiFi, <laughs> a MiFi with 3G. Oh shit. Uh, uh, what did I miss besides your nothing, Ronan? Yo, shout out to Clockwork with the sub. I appreciate it. Fan base. Although All right, so next we got to me. we got a tweet from um 
Game Informer. Apparently, they Star Wars Outlaws is the cover story for this month's edition. I don't know who's buying the magazine, but luckily for us, they put their 12 page cover story online. That's nice to see. So we don't got to pay for it. Uh, you niggas will buy a $1,500 iPhone, but won't pay the light bill. You acting like they got bills. But 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 wait. Oh, false alarm. Yeah, who got who got a, who got a subscription to Game Informer, bro? I want to read about this shit. I was planning to read this shit. Um, off topic, but where can I watch your Super Mario Sunshine? You can't. Who got a subscription to this shit, bro? Or who got the link to the to the to the leak, man? Somebody leaked this shit, bro. <laughs> Allegedly. Come on, bro. You want us to pay? Get the fuck out of here. Ronan has one. He works. You got it. You got it. You got a login for this shit, Ronan. I still got my life subscription to Game Informer from working at GameStop. Fuck games. Game Informer, do this trick. Will this even work? Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Outlaws story. Ah. Uh trailer developer this breakdown. The trick. Let's Today see. I'm going to give you more information about what you saw in the new story trailer, including details about new characters and criminal syndicates. All right, I guess we're learning about the game from this video then Represent instead of reading. Some of the most powerful criminal you can probably use archive. Slero is one of the galaxy's elite, living in Canto Bight and leading his own burgeoning and highly lethal criminal syndicate, Zarek Besh. Slero organized this gathering of syndicates as a demonstration of that power and to show that his organization, Zarek Besh, should not be crossed. The Ronin lore is updated. They said, say it ain't so, Ronin. Is it true? They said you got fired from GameStop because you said fuck Game Informer. You know, GameStop owns Game Informer. You over here dropping links and shit. <laughs> in the golden age of prime syndicates, the syndicates in Star Wars Outlaws are spread across the Outer Rim and their impact can be felt everywhere. We have previously shared that the Pike Syndicate, the Hutt Cartel, and the Ashiga Clan, which is a new syndicate created in close collaboration like between a racial Massive slur. Entertainment and Lucasfilm Games, are in the game. Today, we got to reveal that the elegant and sophisticated... Wait, wait, did he say that's an original clan invented for the game? Hold up. Massive Entertainment and Luke created in close collaboration between Massive Entertainment and Lucasfilm Games, are in the game. Today... Star Wars fans, does this upset you? Cause doesn't this take place during the original trilogy? Now they're in, they're implementing clans and characters that didn't exist. Well, actually, for all the well actually ass niggas, does this bother you? Cause isn't this shit canon? Thanks Yo, shout to Mr. Loudy with the sub. This Appreciate it. Money for TBH to cop a brick from Dr. Eggman. Today we got to reveal that the elegant and sophisticated yet highly fucking up my story Dawn will also be a key player in the Shout out to you. Star Wars Outlaws. Did Kay. you get him, Jays? Across the Outer Rim, Kay will build her reputation and form tense and ever-changing alliances with each of these syndicates, which will offer varying gameplay and narrative opportunities depending on your actions. Whether providing you access to some of the most lucrative jobs in the galaxy or hunting you down if you've double-crossed them. What do you want? Zarek Besh. You crossed their boss, Slero, and now he wants you gone. Jalen is somewhat of a mentor for Kay. He's a fellow scoundrel that has a lot. This might be the first white Jalen I've ever seen. This is crazy. Usually Jalen are like light-skinned basketball players in the NBA. A lot of experience in the underworld, and he sees potential. Jalen, Braden, Aiden. <laughs> if their name is Jaden, Braden, Aiden, Aylin, the father's black and the mother's white. I, I I bet a paycheck. <laughs> the mother's white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aiden. <laughs> Rob his fortune and buy your freedom. Jalen offers Kay her one shot at ultimate freedom to pull off one of the greatest heists the galaxy has ever seen. Heavy on the Aiden. <laughs> As a member of the galaxy's elite, Slero's mansion is heavily fortified by multiple levels of security and his own personal syndicate, Zarek Besh. After a failed job, Slero doesn't take kindly to Kay, placing a bounty on her head and sending one of the galaxy's best bounty hunters, Vale, to hunt her down. This job? Say it ain't it's so. A death wish. 
The legendary Hutt cartel represent one of the criminal syndicates that Kay will encounter during her journey across the Outer Rim. Does that mean there's a chance we could get a mission where we run into Princess Leia in the bikini? If this takes place during the original trilogy and you run into Jabba, there is a chance there might be a mission where we talk to Princess Leia half naked. You niggas are going to lose it if there's a mission with fucking Bikini Leia. Oh. Kay and Nyx will come face to face with their leader Jabba this game's in his great. iconic throne room on Tatooine. But the Hut presence will be felt across other locations and planets too, where you will meet some new faces of the Hut cartel. So you'll need to be careful as your reputation will follow you. Out here you live and die by Didn't Disney ban that version of Leia? Have real power what does that mean? Disney banned Bikini Leia? How do you ban what's a part of the original trilogy? What, is, what does that mean? Did they read? Did they edit the movie or something? Did I miss something? The underworld in each of the locations K and Nix will visit on their journey. Their impact and influence will be felt wherever you go, from the vendors you interact with, the jobs you take on, the support you receive, and even the access you have to certain territories. I don't think they show that outfit anymore. Freedom. Attempting to rob Slero's mansion alone ah. is impossible. Even if K and Nix got in they wouldn't be getting out. In order to pull off the job, K and Nyx will need to travel across the Outer Rim to find skilled outlaws and convince them to join her in pulling off the greatest heist the galaxy has ever seen. Yeah, I just pray this game has, in like the graphics and the story look good, but I just pray this game has interesting gameplay design and an interesting gameplay loop. Because I'm fearful this is going to be third person Far Cry or third person Avatar Pandora where like, it's going to put you on this planet of like an open world and it's just going to be like different bases of like smuggler camps that you invade and, you know, kill them off. Like, I, I'm afraid this is going to be another Ubisoft game with a coat of Star Wars paint on it. There's a lot of fun and exciting characters that you'll meet on your journey, some of whom you see here. Hang on. Climbing towers and shit. Yeah. I hire you. Because you were one of the best hunters in the Outer Rim. Raised in the underworld, Vale has had a toe in every syndicate and has learned from each of them. Because of her experience, Vale is a formidable adversary for Kay. She can fight, pilot, hunt, smuggle, anything she needs to do in order to pull off a job and claim her bounty. Rat, rat, rat. Kay grew up alone, fighting for scraps in the workers' district of Canto Bight, relying on her skills as a thief and Nyx to pull off small cons to get by. Kay has always felt that the galaxy is rigged against people like her and has always dreamt of a life beyond- A liberal Star Wars character, uh-oh. The go woke, go broke crowd is not gonna like Kay Voss. Not only is the main character a woman, but she's a victim. Did y'all hear that? She said this character always felt like the system was rigged. Definitely a fucking liberal. For scraps in the workers' district of Canto Bight. The yeah. Skills as a thief and Nyx to pull off small cons to get by. Kay has always felt that the galaxy is rigged against people. See, like politics, me. politics, and my fucking. Just because this nigga resubscribed. Shout out to Frank B. Gaming. To subscribe to with the, the sub, appreciate it. Tribute to black on black crime. The Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. I swear on Maria's life, y'all niggas trip. Always dreamt of a life beyond Canto, where she does not answer to anyone. Meow. This job is her opportunity to make her dream a reality and to finally be truly free. Star Wars Outlaws pre order available now. They're ruining my favorite series about political. <laughs> right, 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 right. That'd be funny if they try to argue they're making Star Wars political. Be like, you know, the whole series is political, right? It's called Star Wars. War is political. It's literally about a fucking empire, a fascist empire, fucking damn near enslaving the galaxy in a revolution. <laughs> it just was never, it used to be about laser swords and shit. Like, I think you missed the point. <laughs> I think you missed the fucking point. Oh, shit. They will, don't worry. Yeah, it's quite the political soap opera, but yeah, it's fucking political shonen shit. I got a short that's gonna piss the Star Wars fans off. I can't wait to see the comments. It's fucking funny. This thumbnail is crazy. What the hell? 
Um, the game looks good. I'm upset that this fucking 12 page article, man, they trying to charge 20 bucks to read this shit, man. I hope somebody fucking allegedly posts this on a forum or something. This is a heads up when the Joker's two trailer goes live. Some of that teaser. I already seen this shit. I don't care. Yeah, I already seen this. This nigga's just laughing in the rain. Like, what is it? Y'all niggas excited about that? <laughs> First of all, I already told y'all. 20. Uh, yeah, they want you to pay a monthly subscription. I already told y'all, man. I don't know. Like, I don't like musicals. <laughs> it's raining in Gotham. The tyranny is coming down on me. I gather my friends and shoot up everything. Got them, got them, I love thee. Oh, God, bro. <laughs> it's society, society. What does this say about society? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to give it a chance. If it's not heavy on the musical portions, I'll be happy. It's been confirmed. It's a musical. Therefore, it will be heavy on the music. This this, this, this is a bait and switch. This shit is supposed to drop tonight at 630. Interesting. This is a bait and switch. They already confirmed it's a musical. Don't let Diddy catch you singing. Don't put Diddy on my body. What the fuck, Ray? Um, that sucks, though. We can't read the damn... I, I wanted to read about the Star Wars shit. Okay. What is this sauce? What is this? The business of gaming, exploring revenue streams for players. The game industry has been booming and blooming for more than a decade, and there's always something new to offer to gamers and esports enthusiasts. It's an entertaining industry with more layers beneath when playing some of the best online casino games. For example, it seems like game development is easy and straightforward. But the reality is much different. And this article will try to uncover the secrets of gaming business and the concepts of revenue streams for players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, traditional revenue streams. This section will discuss you know, game sales, downloadable items and content subscriptions. We're aware of this. Are they just breaking down like things we already are aware of? Monetization for players. Many players play games so they can monetize their effort. And here are some ways to do that. What game is that? Esport and competition. Esports and tournaments can often come with huge prizes, millions of dollars earned by the top players. Still, it requires a, that's that's actually hella misleading. Most tournaments are not millions of dollars, maybe one or two a year, and that's usually split up amongst like five players, a coach, the team. You got taxes. These niggas is broke. That's why they retire by the time they're twenty one. Um. Still, it requires exceptional gaming skills, investments. Are people playing games just to try to win money? Like, what? What are you talking about? Shit, ruining games. Uh, content related to content creation related to gaming. Many people record themselves and upload videos or write. Yeah, we know. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, freelance coaching. Some gamers will spend time and teach others how to play games. I know that's a thing. People are charging. In game purchases and trading. Yeah, like MMOs and shit like that. What should you know about the gaming revenue models? Like, what's the point of this article? I don't understand what the point of this article. What, what statement is it trying to make? Most pros make their money off their brand and content creation, I would imagine. No, because most pros don't have a brand. Most pros are bums. Uh, people who make money off of their brand are content creators. Uh, but uh, there's, there's like exceptions, but most pros, they don't have a brand. That's the issue with esports. That's why it doesn't make any money. These niggas have no personality. They're boring. They stink. Nobody wants to hear them speak. I don't. I don't care how mean that shit come across. The successful ones I'm talking about. Yeah, that's the thing, though. Like, most of them are not successful. As I said, that's why esports is failing as a whole. Most of them are not successful. Niggas, niggas is making $25,000 a year with no health insurance to play fucking Valorant. Who gives a fuck? Go to school. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Hannibal with the sub. Nah, I'm not trying to epic Mickey remake. Faker's like the only one I know of. Like, go to school. Yeah, get a skill. Get a trade, dude. It's okay. Motherfuckers are so anti-resume. Job resume. An update on Battlefield 2042 and welcoming Motive Studio to the team. Oh, my God. Is there 
this shit. The Battlefield, yep, yeah, yeah. Last month, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's get to it. While we've enjoyed and are proud of creating these seasons of additional content for Battlefield 2042, it is now necessary for us to turn from the present to the future. There, there. Uh, sounds like they're about to uh, sunset the game. What this ultimately means is that season seven will serve as the final season. Yep, this is why I just skip. I always you gotta learn to read, chat. Just skip all this dumbass shit. Get to the meat and potatoes. They're sunsetting the game. We know this news may be disappointing. However, we look at what the future of the series is required. It became clear it was time for us to shift our resources and focus to be fully dedicated to what comes next. Titanfall, hopefully. To the end, Moda Studios, the talented developers known mostly for their work on the critically acclaimed remake of Dead Space and Star Wars Squadrons. I don't know why anyone follows this stream when you um, can be stalking. I mean, following Sonic. Bit, 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 bit. Critically, bit, 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 bit. are building a team focused on Battlefield at their studio. We're tremendously excited for Motive as they're bringing their expertise with Frostbite. What is their boner with this engine? Give it up. I swear they've been using this shit for like 10 years now. Get a new studio, man. Get a new studio. I mean, a new um engine. And make a new game. Hey, guys, we're sunsetting this game so we can make a, the new one. Oh, new Battlefield coming, guys. Breaking news. Uh, don't want DICE to make Titanfall. No, I'm just saying EA needs to make it. I don't really care about this. I got, until I see a trailer, I'm not getting excited about no Call of Duty or no, no uh, um, Battlefield. Uh... Can I just get a cool campaign and mechanics? I don't think I've ever played a Battlefield campaign that I enjoyed. I know everybody hypes up. Um, which one was it? The second one, I think, or some shit like that. But I never played that one. Call of Duty players. Where's Ethos to defend this sinking ship? Well, in defense of 2042. It seems like he really did like it. And a lot of, I've seen a lot of people say they liked it. But just because the game got better and the people who are playing it likes it doesn't mean it's successful. Because, you know, you can't make a first impression twice. They stumbled out the gate. Um, Call of Duty players say new King Kong glove that costs more in COD points in the game isn't worth buying. Call of Duty has a new weapon that asks players to fork out an eye-watering $80 in COD points to unlock it. Um, Battlefield 3 is the only one I liked. Bad, com bad Company, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about, Bad Company. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? About how something can be good and not successful? Yeah. There are plenty of music artists that are really good that are not successful. Uh, oh, you talking about oh, you talking about the eighty dollars? Okay, never mind. Uh, this week, Activision released the Beast Glove weapon as part of the Modern Warfare Three Warzone tie-in, and with the new movie Godzilla: The New Empire, it's Ape's new king, new weapon in the film that lets him unleash a power. Let's just see what it does. Eighty dollars, guys. What does it do? What does it do? It just punches people? What up, Stormy? Oh, you get to beat on your chest like a fucking monkey. Get one shots? Is knife does knifing in the game not one shot? Does does physicals not one shot? Or I haven't played Call of Duty in a while, so I don't know. View on X. What the hell? Who who wants to pay eighty dollars for that? Doom fist glove. That's yeah, eighty dollars for a melee weapon. Doesn't the knife? Yeah, it should. So like, yeah, there's no point in doing this. I mean, I don't know, man. Y'all niggas keep playing this shit. I, I find it very interesting that people are complaining there's an $80 accessory in Modern Warfare 3, but you niggas bought Modern Warfare 3. This was hands down probably top five worst games of 2023. I don't understand why anybody's... I don't think... I'm going to be honest. I don't think this community reserves the right to complain about anything. You bought a $70 piece of DLC. All the reviews told you it was ass. You still bought it. And now you're mad there's $80 DLC in it. Come on, guys. You got fucked once. Of course, they're going to fuck you twice. Uh, I think they've been took the knife out. I don't know. It's going to be a problem in Warzone. Stop buying the shit. Stop buying it. Stop buying it. Stop buying it. Who? who somebody playing it because they uploading clips. <laughs> uh, yeah. How the fuck do you justify $80 for that? Uh, you know. Is it a monkey or some shit? I don't know. 
Um, I bought it for 45. I would have recommend not buying that game at all. Um, don't give them no ideas. Let me open up these joints. Dun, dun. What we got here? And some Shonic news. Uh, a Shonic co-creator was found guilty of insider trading and they break their silence to accuse Square Enix producer of being the kind of person who would submit lies to the court. Sonic co-creator Yuji Naka has something of a varied career since leaving Sega. Initially focusing on his company Probe before teaming up with Square Enix to direct the ill-fated Balan Wonderworld. That game was ass. The latter wasn't a great game, and ever since the release, Naka and the publisher has been engaged in something of a moral blame game as well as a wider wor war of words sparked by an insider trading case brought against Naka and two other Square and Enix employees in 2022. I hope in the, in the game six months ago, I hopped on the game six months ago and I hopped back off because the menu is like a Vegas strip. Mm -mm -mm. Naka was arrested in 2022 on suspicion of insider trading while the creator was still at Square Enix. The main accusation being that he had bought shares in Aiming Incorporated, knowing that Square Enix planned to, planned to collaborate with the studio on mobile games, on the mobile game Dragon Quest Tact. A month later, Naka was arrested, this time in relation to a similar situation with Studio A team in mobile game Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier. Yeah, that's definitely final. That's definitely insider trading, guys, for those who don't know what that is. Pro tip if you want some life, if you don't. Uh, Pro tip uh, in the chat for you guys so you don't ever get arrested. If you're ever working for a company, somebody tells you something is about to happen, so invest in something, don't. But, but, but that's why people need to investigate fucking Nancy Pelosi and all these other goddamn politicians because she bought like $5 million worth of fucking NVIDIA stocks right before they announced all that AI shit. But anyways, um... Take my word for it. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. That That's insider trading. And, and, and the thing about the law is the law applies whether you're whether you're hip to it or not. Even if it's like somebody told you something and then you invested in something and you just didn't know any better. It doesn't matter if they find some shit on you. They're going to get you. Uh, he said, I'm not going to lie. I'm up on the video because of Pelosi. Get her the fuck out of here. The father of Sonic came close to jail time, despite admitting his guilt during his first court appearance in March 2023. There is no doubt that I knew the facts about the game before it made public and bought the... Damn, this man snitched on himself. In July 2023, he was sentenced to a whopping fine of $1.2 million. That's nothing to the creator of Sonic. He can get that money fast at the bank. And two and a half year prison sentence suspended for four years. Naka's remorse saved him from Chokey. But he has to be on his best behavior until 2027. That's not bad. That's only three years. That's crazy. So the creator of Sonic is more like Dr. Robotnik. He's not like Sonic. Naka hasn't made any public comments since shortly before his arrest in 2022, but he's now returned to his old Twitter account purely to take some shots as Square Enix employee who worked on Balan Wonderland, which for those of you unaware, that was a game that came out either last year or 2022. It was supposed to be like a spiritual successor to Sonic. It was horrible. Um, his return was sparked by the reports that Yu Miyake, the executive producer on Balan Wonderlands, but better known for his work on the Dragon Quest series, was reassigned to Square Enix. The most eyebrow-raising element by far is that Naka accuses Miyake lying in his court submissions during Nor Naka's trial. It feels like it's happening, said Naka via machine translation. I hope he'll be gone soon because he's the kind of person who would submit a note with lies with evidence to the court. I've never met him, but the new president of Square Enix seems like a good person. Damn, he said he snitched on me and he lied, bro. But my thing is like, what did he lie about? Because he also admitted in his quote up here that he did do insider trading. So what did he lie about? <laughs> this is one of those people like, oh, what I did is bad, but it's not that bad because this person did this, bro. Serve your time like a man, bro. That's crazy. The creator of Sonic's trying to get out of judge. Fast as possible. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to eat honey buns. I don't want to eat any more of the fucking meat, meat low surprise and fucking jailhouse cakes. I don't want to cook under the toilet anymore. So I got to get out of here fast. That game was hot garbage. It was hot garbage. It, it flew under the radar for the most part. It was so bad. Shout out to all the Sonic fans out there. 